Hello there, everybody. This is Terry Lawton here from climatechangeagenda.com. Now, earlier this week, I was contacted uh, by a kinesiologist here in County Wexford, and uh, she sent me an email to my website, climatechangeagenda.com. And um, I have the lady on the line here with me. Um, we're going to have a conversation now in a few minutes. But first of all, I want to read you the email that she sent me. So here it goes. Hi, Terry. Fanola is my name. I'm a kinesiologist from Feathered in County Wexford. Uh, a lady in the health store gave me her name today. She was sick for a few days, and I said, no wonder. Have you seen the chemtrails in the past week? Terry, I was somewhat aware um, for a long time about weather warfare and the chemtrail program. Uh, however, since the man-made Ophelia, I am inundated with sick people, and they have all the same symptoms. I have been finding uranium, aluminium, nagalase, which is a vitamin D blocker, viruses, microplasms, such as limes and other man-made hybrids, formaldehyde, ethylene gly glycine, and trichoderma funguses. As you may have noticed, the sickness is ramped up since the storm. There was another blast of chemicals about three weeks ago, which burnt out people's throats and sinuses. I'd love to connect with you as I am on a mission to be a part of the solution to expose the climate engineering agenda. Thanks, Fanola. So, Fanola, thank you very much for uh, coming on here and, and talking to me and uh, uh, just um, in your efforts to expose what's taking place. Um, I was very excited to get the e email from you because not many, very few health professionals are speaking out about what they're seeing in people's bodies nowadays. Um, and it's, it's, it's something that we all need to um, be, be, be very um, aware of what's, 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 what's showing up because our doctors are certainly not going to be telling us um, what, what, what's in our bodies. And the, the doctors and all of the health professionals, um, they, they are working tooth and nail to, um, to cover up the devastation that these programs are causing to our health and to keep us calm basically through the genocide, that's what their job is. So I'm very excited to have you on and uh, thanks a million. So if you'd like to just um, just get straight into it, you were talking about, you know, everything that you're finding and um, you said that you've, you, you've been aware of chemtrails for some time. Um, yeah, if, if, if you weren't aware of chemtrails, uh, Fanola, where would you, where would you think that these, um, these chemicals and substances would be coming from because they're not environmental substances, most of them, they're, they're synthetic, isn't that right? Okay, hey, uh, hi Terry, how are you? Thank you very much for uh, having me on today. Um, yeah, basically uh, uranium, I mean, I'm working for five years, right, I've only ever come across one person that's ever had uranium in their body, this particular person had been in, in, um, in a room turned over, you know. So since the storm, about a week and a half later, when I started to clue into the fact that someone had showed for uranium and the next person and the next person and every single person thereafter, um, it's really quite significant that before the 16th of October, there was no one showing uranium and now everyone was showing uranium. So something very significant there, but it's since the 16th of October, which is a failure. Yeah, yeah so, you, so there was a direct correlation there between um, the... Um the time of the the, star, the storm or the hurricane and the rise in illness. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So, um, can you tell me? Uh, are many of your patients? Um, well, first of all, they're obviously going to you because they're sick and they they need to be cured. Um, uh, first of all, you, you you obviously tell your patients all of this stuff that's in their bodies. Do you? Obviously, it, it's it's something you have to do because. Um, it's um it's it's a part of your job to tell them and but uh does this does this frighten people to find out that they have things like uh uranium and nagalese and aluminium in, in their bodies? So when I've been telling people, for example, there's a lot of uranium, a lot of aluminium, a few formaldehyde in the air, not to mention all the microorganisms. Um for the most part I don't know that people really understand how dangerous and how serious uranium is. I'm like this is this is this is radioactive at the death, guys. This is the heaviest part of the periodic table here. I and mean, you know, the, the country's awash with it. It's going to be in your water and your food. 
and it goes through your bones. Like it's it's so serious. And for the most part, people are, I don't think are really too, maybe they're shocked, <laughs> or maybe they don't really understand. I think there is what they call um, cognitive dissonance, okay. where they simply just go, "Oh, that's really nice." So anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, no, I, I, a lot of that, I think. Yeah, so because the substances you're talking here about, like, uh, yeah, some of them, like the aluminium, let's say, is the most abundant metal, and people can say, oh, well, that's that's everywhere. Aluminium is everywhere, yes, but aluminium should only be, it's, it's only abundant uh, in, in bonded form. Like, this stuff is floating around in the air, aluminium. And, you know, we know this from, from rain tests that I've taken here in Wexford. It's in, in unbonded form, falling down in the rain, so... To get into the rain, it's got to be in the sky. And how does it get into the sky? It's not from industry. We're in a, a pristine rural location here in Wexford. So um, this stuff is coming down in the rain. We know that the aluminium is already in the jet fuel. In 1995, there was a switch over from JP5 fuel to JP8 uh, in commercial aviation fuel. And the difference in these two fuel types, fuel types was four times the aluminium content. And again, in correlation with that switchover, we see a massive increase now in neurological disorders like Alzheimer's and dementia, which are all directly linked to aluminium. So, um, so to send the uranium, people could say, oh, well, the uranium, that could be coming from still Chernobyl, it could be still fallout of that, or it could be coming from Fukushima. And, but then when you talk about things like Nagalase, a vitamin D blocker, uh, if this is synthetic, um, creation, just like you, you were talking about micro, mycoplasms as well. Um, is Nagalase a, a synthetic, is that made in a laboratory? Um, it, it is, it, it would have to be in that quantity. In, in the medical world, you would look for Nagalase in the body if you're looking for cancer. So it's something that is, it, the body can manufacture if there is cancer in the body. Um, but to have it, to, to be finding it in absolutely every single person, you would have to either inject it or breathe it in. It would have to be put there. Okay. Now, and onto the, 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 the mycoplasms, um, such as lime, you, you said myco, mycoplasms are showing up in people's bodies, such as limes yeah. and other man made hybrids. Now, how the hell are these things getting into people's bodies? Do you know? Yeah, and these, these are very tricky to find. I don't know even if the doctor's world could find these things because they're they're not natural. They're manufactured. They're synthetic. I'm calling them hybrids because, for example, with lines, it's virally par It's like a parasitic virus. It's, it's like a hybrid of two organisms, you know. And they're very tricky to find, but it's something kind of bacterially, kind of like fungally, and, and you're trying to get it as close as you can to find the remedies for it, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, like, oh, first I realized there was a lot of ethanol, glycine, dioxins, formaldehyde, toxic metals, a multitude of them, you know. Um, but uh, later on when I started to find the likes of E. coli, uh, influenza virus, and um, nagulase in people, they're like, this is definitely more sinister. It's far more sinister. Even for everyone that has flu, it's very rare. It's very strange. Mm -hmm. People get flu. Get viruses, but it's very rarely a flu. So the fact, and, and, and you can see, sorry, it's preclinical. You're finding them, but they haven't actually become a problem yet. You won't really see it till probably mid-January and into February. Yeah, and every year the illnesses seem to be getting worse. More people are getting the flu, and um, just everybody is everybody is aware of this, and all, everybody's talking about it. Wow, what about all this, all this flu going around? Where is it all coming from? And people just seem to be bewildered, and they have no idea really what's going on in the, in the skies above their heads. And... Um, you know, for, for listeners that are, are unaware, uh, governments around the world for, de for the last, uh, well, decade have been, have been proposing uh, spraying the atmosphere with substances in order to sl supposedly slow down global warming. Their method of um, choice is to spray substances from uh, commercial aircraft. Now, everything they talk about spraying, like sulfuric acid and aluminium oxide, and nanotechnology, uh, all of these things are showing up around the world now, and we see all of these big trails in the skies, you know, and it's exactly what they talk about doing. They call it stratospheric aerosol geoengineering, just spraying big long white trails in the back of planes and covering the skies and um, knitting cloud systems together. And what, what they propose, we're seeing now, but, but they deny, deny, deny that these programs are going on. I've been to conferences, tree conferences, where they've been proposing these exact programs, uh, climate engineering programs. And these scientists, they, all they do is lie. They're paid liars. They just say, oh, it's not going on, it's not going on. But meanwhile, we see it going on in the skies above us, and the substances are falling uh, 
everywhere. They're being found in, in, in people's bodies, as you're saying. Um, they're in the rainwater. It's, it's everywhere. And we're, we're just living through, we're living in, in a toxic uh, environment. It's actually not even safe to breathe the air anymore. Um, the air pollution is now the single uh, biggest uh, cause of death worldwide. And the, all, the, the EPA and the, all the government uh, propaganda outlets are all pulling out the stops now to normalize, weaponize air as a, a reality that we all now must get used to. You see, they're blaming um, the common man for, 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 um, for all of this air pollution. They're saying that we are driving our cars too much. They say that we're burning too much coal. But they never, ever mention the big elephant in the room, which is the chemtrail program, the stratospheric aerosol geoengineering. And this is just mind-boggling that this is completely omitted from the from the uh, equation. Recently, I, I like as I said, I've had my rainwater tested and it showed aluminium. But recently, I um, came across a field here in County in in, Wexford, in in Kilmore here in Wexford, and the field was just shrouded with nanofibers, nanotechnology. And this was verified through a, a lab lab uh, results um, that I that I got back from the states and from a, a ver, very reputable um, laboratory, the, the Carnicom Institute. And this is nanotechnology. These are complex micro um, organisms of a, a very complex uh, biological and chemical nature. So this stuff has fallen down on us. So what the hell is it doing in our air? The, the, the field was absolutely covered in it. It was falling from the sky. It was just straight from a science fiction movie. And it's not a conspiracy theory. This stuff is real. It's actually fallen down. I've made the video to prove that this stuff uh, was not uh, spider webs, as the, the, uh, the government will have you believe. Um, this is nanotechnology. And one of the climate engineering conferences that I attended in Berlin in 2014, um, there was a presentation at that conference and the presentation was about um, not only um, climate engineering but also human engineering and uh, they spoke about changing the human genome and human DNA uh, by spraying substances into the atmosphere. So that's what they were saying, they were saying they're going to spray stuff into the atmosphere through a commercial, uh, using commercial aircraft for the purpose of re-engineering the climate and re-engineering humans. And if people don't know what transhumanists are, the guy that done that presentation, his name was Jamais Cassio, and he's a transhumanist, and transhumanists believe that the human form is inadequate and it needs to be altered. And this is, this is all the talk now in all the science magazines, and it has been in, uh, in the television shows and all the movies for years. They've been getting us used to this whole idea of um, transhumanism merging man with machine. And now we see National Geographic back in uh, April of this year. Uh, the headline was the next human uh, taking evolution into her own hands. And you can see like technology becoming a part of man. This is the illustration they use. And that's what they want. They want this nanotechnology. They want to spray it. They are spraying it. They want it to uh, be impregnated into all living things so that every, every, every living creature uh, will be mechanized and controlled through artificial intelligence and uh, the 5G Internet of Things. Now, I'm going a little bit kind of off uh, in a, on a tangent there, but that's just, I had to just basically summarize the reasons they're spraying this nanotechnology. So just getting back to um, your article or the, your, your, um, your email, um, just, yeah, you talked about tri, tri, trichoderma funguses. And um, it's, this is a fact, uh, Fanola. Right now, we are living in the biggest mass extinction period in 60 million years. 200 species of plants, mammals, animals, birds, and insects becoming extinct every 24 hours on the planet, every 24 hours, that's a fact. And 70% of those extinctions are fungal related from the damp, dark conditions being created by these programs. And we, have, you have evidence here now that this, this fungus has been sprayed on us. This stuff is falling down. Yes, you're finding it in people's bodies and lots of people will just try to argue till the cows come home, they'll try to rationalize it in their mind and say, oh, but it could be coming from the mushrooms you're eating, or oh, it could be coming from the garden, or it could be coming from this and that. And that. Why is it in everybody? You know, we're all, we, we all live different lifestyles, but we all share one thing in common, we all breathe the same air, and why, is all of the, why are all of these identical materials being shown up now in, in, in people from all, from all walks of life? You know, it's just, it's, 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 it's we, we, are, we are in a, a, a national uh, emergency, the likes of which it's, it's almost hard to put into words now. I'm not trying to cause alarm, but we, we need to, this needs to get out there. People need to understand what's in the air they're breathing. People need to understand why all these illnesses are happening. People need to understand that 
um, climate engineering proponents like like Ken Caldera, who um, who was at one of the climate engineering conferences I attended. He was actually in Berlin. Ken Caldera is a he he's comes he he was educated at the Lawrence Livermore Laboratory in America, and these are the guys that are building the directed energy weapons and all the weapon systems for the U for uh, the military U.S. military. But Ken Caldera spoke about, sorry, he's gone from uh, basically nuclear uh, physics into climate physics now. This is his new uh, career. But he, he spoke one time uh, and he said, it was about 15 years ago, he said that um, I, I studied at Lawrence Livermore Labs and we once, uh, La Lawrence Livermore Laboratory, and we once spoke about how we could spray pathogens into a cloud off a heavily populated city such as Los Angeles. We could let the, fla the, cl the cloud would blow in over the city and we, we could rain down the pathogens on the enemy. These are the kind of psychopaths. Uh, that we're dealing with here. These these are the kind of people that um, are, are, are pr proposing, which they're already doing, but they're already propo he's proposing uh, taking control of our climate. So um, people need to just understand what's going on here. And you know, um, so, sorry, I'm just going on a bit of a rant here, Fanola, but I just need to get a bit of a little tiny bit more information out there just before uh, you, you come back in. But um, recently, actually in 2013, there there was a company in Australia called Paxvax. And this company proposed spraying the, the uh, population of Queensland in Australia with a vaccine because they said uh, that people weren't really um, voluntarily wanting to take vaccines anymore, obviously because they're waking up to the vaccine fraud. And uh, so we're just going to spray it on them. This is the kind of psychopathic mentality we're dealing with that, that run these corporations and that are in control of government with all these talking heads like Ken Caldera and David Keith and all of these other guys. If there's people out there that think that, oh, government wouldn't spray me, oh, why would they do that? You just got to look to history, folks, because government has had a long history of spraying its people. You can look to the biological warfare trials in the UK, from, which ran from the 1940s through to the 1970s, um, later declassified in the 1990s that the RAF and the, the um, British Ministry of Defence were spraying zinc cadmium sulfide on the British population and their cover story was that they were testing to see how the population would react to a Cold War attack and also over in America at the same time there was another program uh, running uh, where the, the, the US government was spraying their people that was called large area coverage and you know and you know people need to understand also that there's biological weapons databases all over the world as well and in these databases they have they have they have got stored in there um, like viruses from like the Black Death and the bubonic plague. All of these viruses have been resurrected from DNA of the victims of these uh, these um, plagues, and they're they're all now stored in a laboratory. And you know it's it's just these these laboratories are all over the world. There's hundreds of them in America, as I said, and people need to understand what's going on here. Sorry, I'm just going on a bit of a rant there, <laughs> uh, but. Just, uh, no, I'd, li I'd like to just give the floor back to you for a second, Fanola. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, how, how long have you been aware of chemtrails? Because you, you, have, you have written an article recently, and you have it up on your website. Your website is amazing, by the way, very professional, and you're, you're obviously very renowned uh, for, for, what you, for what you do in your area as a kinesiologist. But you recently wrote an article called The Winds of Autumn. And in this article, uh, well, basically, you talk about... Um, hurricane Ophelia and all of the, the stuff you're finding in people's uh, bodies, just like the email, basically. But at the end of this uh, article, you um, you have photos of um, chemtrail skies or stratospheric aerosol geoengineered skies, and um, this is amazing. Like to have a health professional include this vital information on her website, and you have environmental stresses here you talk about and you say sprayed foods, sprayed skies, fluoridated water, Wi-Fi, 3G, 4G and 5G, vaccines, harp, Gwen Tower smartphone, smart home, smart electricity, chemical and, and weather warfare. I mean this is just amazing and I am just personally so excited to to to, to have been contacted by you. Um, but um, so, like, yes. Yeah, so, to go back to the question, you, you have, how long have you been aware of chemtrails? And you, 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 it, were you, you, I think you were saying that we, we spoke the other night, and you said you were kind of in denial about it for for, for a certain amount of time. But the point, you come to the point um, when when you start hearing this stuff that you like, as, as Ayn Rand said, you can ignore reality, but you can't ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. 
So um, at what point, uh, where, where along the line did you first hear of um, chemtrails, geoengineering, and, um, and, and how long have you been um, getting the word out through your, your professional website? Um, so I would have first come across chemtrails um, uh, uh, probably close to 10 years ago, maybe 8 or 9 years ago, right. um, I lived in Canada, and the whole 9-11 thing was like widely known, it was an inside job out there, and I was like, oh my god, what? Yeah. <laughs> See? And then this, this was where it started, and I was like, well, what else is it? not real? <laughs> yeah. And um, I came across the idea of the, you know, when people talk, and particularly YouTube, I mean, most, a lot of information comes to YouTube. Um, and about the, the chemtrail, but I decided because I love traveling, I'm like, okay, they just changed their fuel, people are complaining about it, I'm not interested because I want to keep traveling, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And then I kind of, as the years have gone on and you're starting to look up the sky, you're going, that's been a lot of stuff coming out of those engines, all right? Mm-hmm. And just continued to start, to, okay, well, it is what it is. And then when I see you hit, it was like, I cannot actually turn the blind eye to this anymore, so let me have a look at what our chemtrails really. And so it wasn't just a case of they changed the fuel in commercial airlines. They've actually got airplanes that are loaded to the game of chemicals and they're just um, creating patterns. It's like they're plowing the sky. There's four of them at one time plowing one way and they come back the other way. And like, you know, the checkerboard, it's like, what the hell is this? And like, it is, it is what it is. They're spraying to cover up the sun to try and allegedly protect us from the global warming that none of us are actually seeing because it's not heating up, is it? It's cooling down. Exactly. So mm-hmm. it's such a, um, there, it's, such, it's a corporate war on the planet. Mm-hmm. Corporations want to rule, it's domination, you know? Yeah. And we the people have the power, we just don't know it yet. And we don't realize that one person has the power to change it all. Completely. And every so, one person. So true. Because only know their power, yeah. Yeah. And then um, it's not someone else's work. Yeah. If you, like, it, what I had, because it, it was upsetting me, and obviously it's upsetting when you find these things out, you don't want them to be real. Mm. They're like, am I in Austin Paris movie every day? What the oh. hell is going on? Mm. But I decided I'm not a victim, and I'm not the oppressor, therefore I am the solution. Yes. And then it's easy. Exactly. I am not a victim, though. That well, was it. Well, I tell you, you really are taking the, 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 the most brilliant steps to, to, you know, to solving this this crisis that we're in, because, you know, a health professional like you, um, your, your message can be much more powerful than somebody like me. I'm just a layman novice, you know, so mm-hmm. y- your, your, your message can be so much more powerful than mine. And, and this is, this is why I would, uh, this is why I would uh, appeal to other health professionals now who are also coming into contact with this information for the first time or that you may have known about it for the first time. I would ask you to just, you know, I, I would appeal to your conscience to just, you know, um, we are in the fight of our lives here and, you know, does your paycheck really matter at the end of the day when, you know, when uh, all species are slowly becoming extinct, when, you know, Alzheimer's is now the biggest killer in, in, in the UK from air, and in uh, Ireland and the UK from, from air pollution and, and aluminium, um, you know, uh, that, you know, does it really matter when, when respiratory, fa- when um, uh, air pollution is the, um, the biggest um, cause of death? Worldwide as well, you know, it's just there's we just we're just we've just such a magnitude of problems that we're all being affected by now, and comes a time where you just got to say, look, it's my job doesn't really matter at the end of the day. What matters is is uh, prioritizing things here because we like we humans are the only species that can stop this, and our our poor fellow creatures like dogs in the streets or fish in the sea or birds in the sky, they have no hope. They can't stop this. They can't communicate um, uh, through this enslaved language called English like we do. Um, you know, they, they can't appeal to their slave masters like we can, but we can communicate with each other and we can stop it. We have the physical capability to stop it. I don't mean through violence, but I'm talking about through action, through taking action and informing each other. So we need all health professionals to come on board and as many as possible to just start speaking out because there's, there's doctors speaking out all over the world now and this is very exciting as well. There's NASA um, employees speaking out and, you know, yeah, a lot of these are getting, these people are, you know, mysteriously dying and, you know, being killed under mysterious circumstances but, you know, this is what happens unfortunately but they can't kill us all is what I'm saying and, you know, and so we all kind of just have to step up to the plate. So, um, yeah. So, I, I think for, for health professionals, if they if they want to really treat their clients well, they're going to have to know what toxins they're dealing with. 
because that's how it is for me. For me to, to help the person the best way I can, I need to know what, I, what I'm dealing with. Which is why I need to know what, what, that's why I have the test kits, that's why I know there's uranium from MRIs and all of these toxins in the body. Yeah. Um, and it's the piece and it's together after that, where is it coming from? Because always if you find toxic metals in the body, you need to know where's the lead, where's the arsenic, where is it coming from? Um, but there was no doubt about it. I think anyone who lived in Ireland during Australia the days afterwards had no doubt in their mind what that energy felt like. It's heavy deadly, it's hard, there wasn't even a bird singing in the sky for at least five or six days afterwards, and a few days before, yeah. and it was, it was just wasn't, I've, I've lived in, uh, on the Hoop Cave for most of my life, I've seen some big storms, natural storms, and they're beautiful, and they're amazing, and they're powerful, mm. this was violent and aggressive, and it wasn't very nice, Yeah, because it's not a typical storm, there was something different in it, yeah. so, and I, I, I also love the coastline for all. I, I, I spend a lot of time down around the Hookhead and all as well. And I just love going out into the beach or walking the coastline in a storm because you, you're, you're absorbing all those uh, negative ions from the ocean. And all of this stuff that they're spraying on us is positive ions. This makes us feel lethargic. All of these substances are positive ions, but the, the, the ocean has got negative ions. That's why you feel so good when you're next to the ocean. And I always used to feel so good going to the ocean, you know, through a storm and all. And, you know, but as, as you're saying, there's a static kind of a, a dead feeling in the air uh, a lot lately. And, you know, it's, it, it's, it's something that never was like that when I was a child, you know. And um, this would be all, all of that stuff you're talking about. There's a lot of negative energy from all of this stuff they're spraying. And they're also using electromagnetics on us. They've got all sorts of weather warfare uh, weapons that they're using against us. I mean, they've got, they're using laser weapons now to control the weather. This is mainstream news. Dublin City University has been working on building these LIDAR lasers. And, uh, you know, there's just a whole global network of uh, weather weapons, basically, that they're using to control the, the cloud cover, the cloud layer of the planet. Because uh, Lyndon Johnson, ex-president of America, before he became president, he actually talked in a speech, he, he said that one day the military will control the world's cloud layer. And, uh, be, and, and, and eventually control the weather because he who controls the weather, he said, will control the world. And this is what we're seeing now. We're seeing our global cloud layer being manufactured every day on, uh, basically, on order, basically, um, a, a schedule, a scheduled weather we're seeing. I mean, it's just, it's all engineered and scheduled weather. When we turn on the television, we look at a forecast. It's not a forecast. That's a weather schedule. And, you know, the, the weaponry is there. Um, it's, it's, the planet is kitted out with all of these electromagnetic facilities um, like Nextrad, Nextrad stations, uh, Doppler towers, uh, mobile phone towers. Uh, the, you can create rain with mobile phone tower technology. There's a company called Rain on Request and they operate out of Florida. And um, th th there's a link to, to that company on my website in the weather uh, company section. And this company um, can make it rain using mobile phone um, tower technology. So it's amazing the technology they have. I mean, it's just and um, it's 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 there. It's it's there, and there's no secret. They're making no secret about it. They use it commercially, but they deny that it's going on clandestinely in their global operations. But anyhow, sorry, I'm going off on a bit of a rant there. Um, but yeah, and then you wonder, like I'm sure people are listening to this going, well, if they can make it rain, why is there drought to Africa? And everyone else on the planet is going, yeah, why is that? And it's going, well, they don't make money on that. Exactly. Every, every crisis that the, 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 whatever you want to call them, the controllers of our planet, the banksters, whatever, let's call them the banksters because everybody knows who the banksters are, who, who the banksters are. Like, um, you know, they, they, they control everything. They control the media. They control the flow of information. They control our minds. They literally have programmed us all since birth through education and mass media, hypnotism. Um, and they control the weather. And, you know, and everything that they're doing, they, they, they have us all, you know, believing that the weather is natural and that all of these viruses are natural when it's, it's all engineered. So, so they're controlling everything and what they do, what they use through their, through their power of control uh, is, is they, they deploy a technique called problem reaction solution, solution or the Hegelian dialectic. And what this is, is they, they create a problem, the public reacts with, you know, through public outcry and they go begging to the government for the solution and then the, the government offers the solution. And in that solution, uh, there, this means the government gets control basically. So let's say the, the most recent 
Um, the biggest example of problem, reaction, solution in our time is 9-11, just like Fanola spoke about there earlier on. 9-11 um, was used as a springboard to launch basically the police state worldwide, to launch uh, new wars. You know, they, they were in Afghanistan, or, uh, Afghanistan the next day. I mean, George Bush signed the launch order to inv invade Afghanistan on September 10th. You know, and everything about 9-11, the whole 9-11 commission report is just... Basically, if you're, if, if you're to believe everything in that, basically you would have to also believe that the laws of physics were suspended that day because everything that happened that day, in the, in, according to the 9-11 Commission report, flies in the face of fundamental physics. Um, the free fall, uh, sorry, build, steel frame buildings falling at free, uh, free fall speed and falling due to fire. Never ever before or after 9-11 did, uh, fire, did uh, any building ever fall due to fire. And lo and behold, on the day of 9-11, not just one, but two Two buildings fell due to fire. How about that? And you have footage everywhere, all over the net, of um, firefighters uh, running, running back and saying, um, uh, you know, there's, there's explosives in the building. Did you hear the explosions? And you know, and you can see it in the video footage as well. You can see the different levels going down the building. You can see explosions, explosions. But anyhow, going off on a bit of a rant. It's a whole other subject, 9/11. Uh, but basically, it stinks to high heaven. The whole thing was absolutely 100% an inside job, and it was used as the, the catalyst, the, the, the justification to launch the wars, the, 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 all the subsequent wars since, not just Afghanistan, not just Iraq, and all this WNDs, you know, all of the lies, the, the, the uh, lie of the, the weapons of mass destruction, which we, all, all based on a lie, which Tony Blair uh, subsequently um, admitted. You know, m millions of people killed, all based on a lie. Imagine that. And we still have them same psychopaths in control. So why would we believe one minute any word that comes out of these people's mouths? They're psychopathic killers and people need to understand what's going on. But back to the problem, reaction, solution. With the weather, the problem, reaction, solution scenario there is they create all the climate problems. They make us all sick in, in the, you know, as they're doing it. That's a multi-trillion dollar industry <coughs> in itself. They create a climate change perception. <coughs> Sorry, my throat is drying up here. And they create the illusion uh, of man-made climate change. They blame us, again, common man, for, for all the climatic um, events that are taking place around the world. Anything re weather-related, it's all blame on climate change. Climate change, it's our fault, it's our fault. And we have to pay more carbon taxes. And carbon taxes is a multi-trillion dollar a year industry. And we are all enslaved already by carbon taxes. And, you know, literally, this is like um, going back to the dark ages, you know, when you used to have to pay the Catholic Church to... Um, to, to, to buy yourself out of out of hell, you know, it's indulgences to the to the to the green communists basically, and the carbon indulgences, and this, these are the times we're living in, and people think that we are absolutely free nowadays. If you think that, you're absolutely just de delusional because none are more hopelessly enslaved enslaved than those who, who falsely believe they are free, and we are not free. We don't have natural anything on this planet. We're not free to drink. Um, clean water. Our water has been poisoned intentionally by fluoride in Ireland here any effort since the 1960s, all under the guise of protecting our teeth. And 20 Harvard studies have proven that it causes fluoride causes massive neurological dysfunction, uh, lowers IQ, causes all, a whole host of cancers, and just the list goes on. And that's, that's just the fluoride. And the air we're breathing is not safe. The food is all genetically modified. They're literally jet genetically engineering us already through the food because if you're eating genetically modified food, you are what you eat after all. So if you're eating genetically modified food, you're genetically engineering yourself. So we're not free by any stretch of the imagination. So, uh, but the thing is, we could be free. And this is what's so frustrating about these times that we live in because all the information is out there. There's no shortage of information out there on the folks now, uh, on, the, on the internet now, uh, folks. And, you know, uh, it's, 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 uh, we, could, we could have a, a, a renaissance period again in history. We could experience just the most, the, the, the most beautiful period in human history where we finally shed the shackles of thousands of years of slavery by the banksters and break free and become the true free spiritual humans that we should be and we can have our planet back together and we can live in harmony, peace and harmony with, with Mother Earth and, you know, and we can just have such a game changer. And it's, it's just, we've got to wake up to it, first of all, to, 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 in order to fix the problem, because if you're in denial about a problem, you can't, you can't, um, you can't fix the problem. So you've got to face, we've got to face up to these horrific uh, realities, and, and it is horrific, but running from the problem and ignoring it is just going to make it worse.
so th th because these th these because these horrendous um, atrocities that have been perpetrated on on, on us all and all life on the planet, uh, they are only they are only going on because the, the large percentage of the the public are ignorant of what's going on. Uh, so the the, 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 the controllers c completely rely on public ignorance in order to, to make to, to continue with their agenda. So you know, lift the veil of deception from this whole evil agenda, and you know, the whole house of cards will start falling because Zbigniew Brzezinski, one of the uh, global art, New World Order architects, he said back in 2011, he said that for the first time in human history, mankind is politically awake and staring the controllers in the eye. They're absolutely terrified now, and they're relying on people to ignore people like you and people like me, Fanola, in order to, to, to continue with their agenda. But it's, it's, I believe it's not going to happen. They're not going to get much further with their agenda because every empire has fallen throughout history. And these, these, these guys are no different. They're no more omnipotent uh, than any other tyrants throughout history. Yes, they've got much more advanced technologies, but I, I, I don't believe that they will be able to see their entire agenda come to fruition. But um, sorry, I've just been going on a bit of a rant there and a tangent there, Fanola. I wanted to go back just to talk about your great solutions uh, aspect on your website, um, also actually in your Winds of Autumn um, article, you talk about um, just all the solutions that you have, the, because this is all about offering solutions and not just offering the problem, because we don't want to talk about all this and just lump you with all, all these problems, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We want to talk to you about solutions as well. So um, you, you talk here about, um, Fanola, you talk about the heavy metals in your body that increase the tolerance to EMS, and you say you're talking about garlic and coriander and all these lovely natural uh, foods that that can chelate the body and all of these metals. So, would you like to just talk a little bit um, about the solutions that that you're, you're 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 offering to people here on how to overcome these illnesses and how to chelate all of these uh, substances out of their bodies? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so in the immediate, what is working extremely well at the moment is colloidal or ionic silver. Mm. That's getting all the E. coli, flus, all these microbes out of the body really well. People feel really good on it. Um, astragalus herb is working excellent to get uranium and the toxic metals out. Astragalus is really good for taking chemicals out of liver as well. So it's a good detoxifier. I'm finding um, oil of oregano is working on the fungus really well also. And also for any parasites that people may have just by it. By incident, <laughs> but um, it, it, it's getting it out. The that particular fungus is really strong. It's in the lungs. It's in the large intestine, and it really had an anchor in there. Toughly to get out, people will feel it. Um, and they may at the moment have a cough that's not going away, or a sinus, or just like um, problems with the bowel, just an uncomfortableness at the moment. So get the oil of oregano in now before it becomes a problem. Um, <clears throat> Toxic metal detox, it's kind of a big topic, um, but every single one of us needs to really probably have it in our, in our life now all of the time. Because you mentioned Alzheimer's and dementia, like you're, I'm seeing it in people that are in their 20s. It's just normal to, oh, I don't remember, I don't remember. I don't, you know, you hear this all the time of people, oh, I, can't, I forget what that's called now. Mm. It's happening all the time. People's memories are going and it's, it's happening because of blanket happening. <laughs> no one seems to really realize that their memories aren't very good, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is a, again, more of a, this is the age of Aquarius now. The age of Aquarius means the warfare are going to the airwaves, as is everything else in the airwaves. So going forward, we must look at how to protect ourselves from the likes of frequencies and whatnot that are not harmonious, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I have talked a little bit about that. I'm still sussing that out because that's something for the rest of my lifetime I have to figure out <laughs> mm -hmm. now that we're in this age. There is an advancement in the human race at the moment. There is no doubt about it. The newer kids they born have the sixth sense open. Um, there's a huge push to try and vaccinate the hell out of them to stop these um, the powers as such, if you want to call it that. But they are our saviors. The little ones come out here are here to look after us, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the powers that be, if you want to call them that, I don't, I don't particularly see them as powers. The powers that shouldn't be. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the ones that have the, the money at the moment and um, have a uh, sort of gone into the dark side, just like Star Wars. Um, they have an agenda also to try and to make this, what is called the 3.0 human, and they're going to use the, the invention to use the technology to interfere with the DNA and whatnot. And um, it cannot be done, this is not natural, it's not normal. And the light will, will overcome, but it does depend on each and every single one person. It's 
not corporations. Forget about your governments. They have no clue what's going on. It's each and every one person's awakening. That's the power. And it doesn't mean you have to go out and start fighting climate change at the moment. It's just to awaken to the fact that you are powerful. You are beautiful. You are meant to be on this planet. You are not here to have a job. You are here to fulfill your soul's purpose. Mm-hmm. And people, all, and, and people are like the awakening. Is, it's here. It's happening. And that's why it's turned to a war now. It's mm-hmm. cool yeah. because the light is getting lighter, but the dark is also getting darker. Completely. My feeling is the light's going in, and we just have to get it to as many people as possible. Go. It's it's not someone else's job now. This is actually you. You're the hero. <laughs> You're the one in those movies. It's you. Each and every one of you that's listening. Exactly. And we we have been trained all our lives to believe that we don't have power and we can't make change and, you know, we're just little old me and all that and nothing could be further from the truth. That's why they've told us all of that, all those lies because they realize our power as human beings and they realize our power when we stand up and resist tyranny. And, um, you were you were talking about um, just all of the different things you can do there, but you, you, your great solutions. And by the way, uh, Fiona, uh, Fanola's website is uh, www.grangevillehealing.com. Now I'm going to put the link uh, on the screen there and also in the uh, video description. Um, and uh, you, you talk about the Wi-Fi and all and that solutions. Um, I think I'm I'm implying a lot more of Wi-Fi sensitivity, people EMS sensitivities, yeah. and I, I think this is going to get um, again quite widespread because <laughs> more and more people using it, and for people who are intolerant, they yeah. lose hell. Completely. Because where can you go now without yeah. something Wi-Fi? Yeah, exactly. So you know, like yeah. what, what Wi-Fi is 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 is, is um, radiation, and it's it's actually lethal it, it, it's, it's DNA destroying um, it is um, it is cancer causing and there's been over 10,000 studies which have proven this from reputable universities and scientists and doctors and um, that have proven this and uh, there, there's a, a document called the bio initiative report and I made a video talking about this last week and um, People need to read this. I'm going to put a link to this in, in the video description. And it's just, it's, it's just, it's amazing. You, you need to read this. You need to turn off Wi-Fi in your house because it is the silent killer. Wi-Fi is banned in schools in Sweden. They're trying to ban it now from all public buildings in France because the French are becoming aware of the, the Wi-Fi weaponry that's around us all. You know, we can't go anywhere now in the country, anywhere in the cities and all, especially when I go into a city or town, I just feel this horrible, just, horrible stagnant energy and I get a headache and I just can't wait to get out of there and this is EMS this is so many other things as well but it's, it's Wi-Fi you know and but you know we can locally uh, sorry um, immediately in our own local environment like in our own home we can turn off Wi-Fi that's the solution there straight away just turn off Wi-Fi and you can cable your, your laptop and you can cable your uh, desktop computers I've done that in my house and it's brilliant it's just it's all gone Wi-Fi is gone I had a radiation expert here in my house and he had a radiation meter and every time I turn on the Wi-Fi the meter went way up to the 2000 and something whatever range it was and then and when I turn it off I'll go right back down to zero then this stuff is in our house and we're bathing in it I try to tell people about this and they just kind of don't want to know about it and but we all need to understand and realize what this stuff is doing to us this literally is the Wi-Fi is silent killer um, so we can do that. We can in, in in our own immediate environment. We can turn off the Wi-Fi. We can demand uh, that the schools that our children go to. We can demand that they get the Wi-Fi the hell out of the school and just cable all the computers. This could be done in one day or a couple of days. Simple solution. Just solutions we're talking about here. And you know, and you know, don't put your I mobile. Think we're to- Terry, actually, in um, Silicon Valley, the riches of the rich do not um, send their children to schools with Wi-Fi or tablets. They of, read books. Of course, they don't. The elites don't. They don't drink. They don't. No. They, they order children don't drink uh, fluoridated water. They don't eat. Or they don't eat uh, genetically modified food. It's all organic. It's organic. all clean. They know exactly yeah. what they're doing. Yes. And people say, well, well, why would they spray themselves if they're? And sp- why would they spray us if they're spraying themselves? Because these psychopaths have got advanced technologies that we could only dream of in a, in a million years, um, you know, they, they, that, that can um, antidote to all the stuff they're spraying, basically, that can just immediately either uh, repel this stuff from coming into their systems, or if it does breach beyond their, their technology, uh, it can drag it out as well, you know, so... Well, I, I have some good news on you there. If they're dependent on medical, they're not going to be too well anyway. If what? If they're depending on medical, these people, they're not going to be as well as you think they are. 
They're not invasive. They might they might adopt this as they can get this stuff out. I don't think I don't think they can. I don't know that there is a, um, a medical or a medical virus out of the body, for example. Yeah. Maybe they can, but it's yeah. never been in, in the public realm anyway. Yes. Yes. And um, so yeah, I, I don't think they're as safe as you might think they are. As well as that, I don't think they're getting on with each other. No, this is the <laughs> beauty. I, you know, I love here. I love hearing confirmation of all these things like you're telling me there now. It's just, the plan is not going according to plan and that is just beautiful. Yeah. Music to my ears yeah. and I, I just, I, it warms my heart to hear statements like that being made. And, you know, and their time is getting short. And, but we can make their time much shorter if we just wake up really quickly and we can, we can get our planet back on track here now and we can fix this big problem that we're in here uh, pretty quickly. But um, just before we wrap it up. Exactly. Because the fuel being, because at the moment the, the fuel is pretty dirty and fuel, I mean, the things that are on supermarket shelves telling you that they're food when they're not really, they're only pretend food for the most part. Exactly. Exactly. We can get we can get a reverse osmosis uh, water filtration system in our home because 80% of our bodies is water and you know we're we're we're, we're just uh, saturated in this stuff called fluoride and we're the only country in Europe that m mandatorily fluoridates well the, the government is the only government in Europe that mandatorily fluoridates its its, its uh, slave citizens so uh, we all need to you know become aware of the fluoride because this is ki this is just absolutely devastating our health and um, the fluoride destroys the blood brain barrier as well and this is an important point to make apart from causing cancer and and and, and all sorts of um, other neurological disorders it, it breaks down the blood brain barrier and the blood brain barrier protects our brains from environmental toxins and also radiation and all other things that are being sprayed on us now basically because uh, all this stuff that's been sprayed on us is all synthetic and our bodies are actually uh, built, to, designed to, to repel this and our blood brain barrier is designed to to, to protect us, our brains from all of this crap that was spraying on us, and but um, you know we can't. Our blood brain barriers are so worn down; they're bas basically gone from the fluoride. So this is why we're seeing so much neurological problems now as well. And this is why Ireland has got the highest level of all of these neurological disorders and cancers, and it's just crazy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You must also know where fluoride comes from because the origin of something is very important too. So fluoride was one of the first uses was in Nazi concentration camps, and it was used to dumb down the people so they become obedient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a and, fact. Uh, and at that, at that time, you might also add the, the hurts of the music. Was that, I can't remember the exact hurt, was it 440 or something? And then that's mm. what's coming out on the radio. Um, the mm. that, yeah. That's your BFM, your QFM. Yeah. The, 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 the natural harmony of music to, to synchronize with the human uh, body is 4.32 hertz. And uh, the, the controllers realized that, that it was harmonious and it was beautiful for us to listen to music at 432 hertz. All of the great composers composed in 432 hertz. And then the psychopaths after World War II, the Rockefeller Foundation dom uh, took control of the music industry and they weaponized music. They basically changed the, the uh, 432 hertz to 444 hertz. And they've literally weaponized music. They've weaponized everything from the air we breathe to the water we drink to the music we feckin' listen to. It's unbelievable. And we are literally in. In, uh, we're, we're goldfish in a bowl, and that's all we are. And uh, I just wanted to just say, oh, no, <laughs> no, hey, no, it's, it's great. I love swimming around. I love swimming around, and our goldfish bowl is going to get so much cleaner and so much bigger. And we're all going to be swimming happily now soon enough, and <coughs> we're all going to be so healthy. But <coughs> just before we wrap it up in a second, I'll, I'll let you with the uh, uh, get, um, to give the final. Um, word uh, there, uh, Fanola. But just before uh, wrap up there, I want to talk just quickly about the 5G network, which is going online in 2020. Ireland is going to be the, the guinea pig nation. We're going to be the first country oh, in the world no. to uh, roll out 5G. And 5G, basically, what 5G is is like it's it's a global Wi-Fi system. Once this is turned on, the whole planet is going to be turned into a Wi-Fi cage. Now, 3G and 4G operated on uh, four hertz uh, 4 gigahertz <coughs> now the 5g is going to operate on 90 gigahertz now 90 gigahertz is 90 million waves radio waves hitting your body every second and this again is dna shattering dna destroying this is it's an absolute nightmare for humanity but you know the, the health the health aspects of this are just 
they're only the beginning. I mean, they want to enslave us by using a, a global Wi-Fi system to hook every every living thing on the planet, including us, up to a thing called the Internet of Things. <coughs> and all governments on board, uh, or all governments around the world are on board this concept of the Internet of Things. And this is the idea that all devices from mobile phones to fridges to televisions, everything around the planet can be connected to a global Wi-Fi system and our lives can be made easier. And the examples they give is that, say, let's say um, you're in a city and there's a, there's a crash a couple of miles down the road. The, the tarmac in, in the road will pick up and see that there's a crash there and it will report to the Internet of Things Wi-Fi system and you will receive um, notification of this in your smartphone because you're on that road approaching the accident. So they try to sell it as a real um, a convenient, you know, mod cons and all and we're going to be saved by the Internet of Things and there will never be any more accidents again and they say that we, we, they will have smart dust in, in the concrete of your building that you're working in and your building will know who you are, it will know your environment and it will open the door when you walk into your building and all this crazy stuff, your laptop will boot up itself and it's just like a complete automated, it's an automated version of consciousness is basically what they're trying to simulate and it's an absolute nightmare for, for humanity, the, the plans that these psychopaths have for us. And the only way we're going to stop it is through uh, informing uh, each other and, you know, waking up to the big picture and accepting that the mess that we're in and just doing our best to, to uh, get ourselves out of it. So, Fanola, it was really great having you on. Do you want to just uh, have the final word there? Um, well, thank you very much. It's, it's a pleasure to chat with you, Terry. Um, just, just for people at home, um, stay, stay well. I mean, take action. If you're feeling sick, go to the health store and get some antibiotics there. They're not going to fix these problems, okay? And it is nobody else is going to do it. We have got to do it for ourselves and just do it for yourself. Exactly. And by doing that for yourself, you're doing it for humanity. <laughs> Yeah. Please for the love of God. Yeah, folks, if you're going, <laughs> the light is going away. There's not a doubt about it. Yeah, folks, if you need, need a lot more on board. If, you, if folks, if you're going to the doctor for the, for the solution to your health problem, you're going to the wrong place because those doctors work for the, the same system that created that health problem. So it's again the problem reaction solution um, agenda at, at play. So we have to. Uh, start to take care of our own bodies and be sovereign uh, and understand that we we are what we eat and we under, have to understand that you know that the big pharma is definitely not going to save us that's killing us so um uh, finola uh yeah i think we'll just finish it up there i I'd, I'd, I'd love to talk all you know we could we could just talk for ages here i think and we're we're, um, we're nearly up to an hour here now, but uh, I know you're a busy okay. girl and you're you're, uh, you're you've got lots lots to do, so I won't keep you for any longer. So look, thanks so much for coming on and talking to thank us and share, sharing you. your sharing your valuable information with us. And um, just thank you for just putting your 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 head out there and you know your your name out there and just stepping up to the plate and doing what all good people should do because. Um, you know, as the saying goes, um, all it takes for evil men and tyrants to prosper is for good men and women to do nothing. So uh, you are certainly not doing that, so thank you for that. And, uh, yeah, um, well, as I said, I'm going to leave a link to your website in the description of this video. And I, w I would hope to talk to you again, Finola. Maybe um, yeah. when it, whenever you feel like maybe coming on again, we can just, um, just shoot the breeze again and just talk about whatever else is going on and more solutions. Hey. and. Well, wait, wait, I tell you, Terry, um, I, I'm going out obviously to do yoga for a month and I come back to Arizona and there's a base in Arizona with one of the biggest bases in America for these chemical things. <laughs> so I might have great news for you. One of the bases for these chemical what? Yeah, I, I don't know the exact thing. It was something I've seen on YouTube, but there is a, a base near uh, Tucson, Arizona, and it's a, re a big army base. And it's where um, they're storing all these chemicals for spraying. Wow. Uh, uh, in Arizona. Do you know, I had heard something about this place, and somebody sent me a link, but I'm getting so much information all the time, I'd actually forgotten about that. Now, it's interesting because uh, I'm off to Tucson, Arizona next uh, May. I'm speaking at the third global chemtrail summit there <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that but I, I didn't uh, so I'm going to have to check that place out when I'm there but okay so thanks everybody for listening and uh, you are the solution in this world of um, problems and this time of great need so please get the word out and awaken your fellow man to the world we live in and the realities of what are going on so again thank you for listening everybody this is Terry Lawton for climate change agenda uh, dot com saying goodbye over and out